What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. One of the great things about the Samsung Captive 8 and all of the Galaxy S devices is its super AMOLED screen. Uh, supposedly it's very bright, vibrant, offers improved battery life and great visibility in the sun. So we're going to put this thing head to head with the Retina display on the iPhone and see who comes out on top. So you may have heard a lot about the Super AMOLED technology and essentially what that means. Instead of the touch sensitive mechanism sitting on top of the glass display, it's actually integrated into the glass itself. So what is that going to mean to you, the end user? Well, it's going to translate into improved battery life, better visibility and direct sunlight, and supposedly brighter, more vibrant colors. So we're going to go ahead and check this out. And there's a quick refresher here. Uh, the Samsung Captivate for AT&T on the right has a four inch capacitive touch screen at the resolution of 480 by 800. And right next to it here on the left, we have the iPhone 4 Retina display and a resolution of 960 by 640 on a 3.5 inch screen. So if we just do that math and multiply them together. Uh, the Captive 8 is going to give us about a 384,000 as opposed to the 600 uh, and 14,000 on the iPhone 4. So you expect that to translate to uh, an improved display on the iPhone. But we're going to go ahead and put that to the test and see if the numbers actually translate. So first let me show you that the brightness here is set to the same. It's going to be hard to necessarily translate what the screens look like uh, over camera, but I do want to show you that we're comparing uh, well, apples to apples. So the brightness we set to about halfway for each. I'll go ahead and show you. There's the brightness there. I'll go ahead and jump into the same thing here on the Captivate. And brightness, you can see we're just about halfway there as well. So go ahead and hit home. So first, let's see how text look on each display. You're going to probably look at a lot of websites, maybe read uh, some books on here as well. Let's go ahead and look at a website and see how text is going to look on each. So you've got Techno Buffalo here queued up, and I'll be doing a full head-to-head -head comparison of both these devices, uh, going over speed and all the specs and the rest. Uh, but for right now, I want to focus just on the screen. So you can see sort of right off the bat, the Captivate has sort of a grayish hue to it and that's going to really come into play as we look at video uh, quality. Now it doesn't particularly bother me at all, you get used to it very quickly, uh, but if you're looking for something that maybe looks a bit whiter, uh, the iPhone is going to be a better way to go. However, the screen on the Captivate uh, definitely looks a lot brighter. So if brightness is important to you, uh, the Captivate is going to be a better way to go. So let's look here at the screen pixels and sort of what we can see. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out on each uh, sort of as far as we can go. And there we go, we are zoomed out. And just by a pure content standpoint, you can see what's shown on both screens. So the iPhone, if you remember, has a resolution of 960 by 640, and the Captivate is 480 by 800. So the uh, horizontal resolution is going to be a bit higher, and you can sort of see that come into play. Uh, the content that we can see here, that sort of cuts off right at that Old Spice ad on the iPhone. You actually see almost one and a half more articles here on the Captivate. So you're actually going to get uh, more content be visible on the Captivate. So go ahead and zoom in, let's see how text looks. Go ahead and zoom in as far as we can here on the iPhone and pick the first article. Looks very crisp, we have no pixelation. The retina display is very good for that. We'll do the same thing here on the Captivate. Go to the same spot, same article. And again, I'll be doing a full browser comparisons and tests, and that's sort of as far as we can zoom in here. And notice again that it looks very clear, crisp, we have no pixelation, uh, very hard to tell the difference between these two displays. Uh, again, you can see a bit of a color hue uh, in the white background on the Captivate that you can't see on the iPhone 4. Uh, however, you notice this when they're next to each other. However, when you have the Captivate on its own, uh, it's hardly noticeable at all. Very similar to if you go look at two TVs at a big box store and you see a $5,000 TV sitting next to a $2,000 TV right next to each other, uh, you can definitely see a difference. But when you get sort of the lesser one home, uh, you can't notice it. Now, I'm not saying the Captivate is a lesser phone or lesser display. Uh, just from a color standpoint, once it's on its own, you really don't recognize it. Uh, so this is really going to come down to a personal preference. If you don't mind that color hue, you are going to get much more content on the Captivate. And when you zoom in, you don't get that pixelating effect. So text looks fantastic on each. Uh, this one is really going to be a personal preference. Let's go ahead and jump on into video and see how video looks on each. These are both very uh, heavy multimedia devices. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how each one uh, approaches video. So we'll go ahead and use the same YouTube clip on each. I was rendered in full 720p. We'll use uh, one of my unboxing videos for this. So we'll go ahead and jump into YouTube here on the Captivate. And it's going to queue up here a, a Droid unboxing video I did, and I'll do the same thing here 
on the iPhone 4. And I'll go ahead and sort of turn this uh, volume down a little bit. And you can go ahead and see what the picture looks like on each. Let's go ahead and kick this down. And now you can sort of see the video quality. Uh, and as the video sort of starts to play, you'll notice that they both look very good and very clear uh, and crisp. Uh, however, you still sort of have that color hue uh, in effect on the uh, Captivate that you don't have here on the iPhone. Uh, but it is definitely something to keep in mind. Video-wise, they both look fantastic. Uh, again, the Captivate looks a little bit brighter at half brightness uh, than the iPhone 4 does. Um, just something to sort of keep in mind. If I turn the brightness all the way up, it wouldn't really capture it on camera. But the brightness on both are turned up all the way, the Captivate still does look a bit brighter. Uh, so you can sort of see here what video is going to look like. You can sort of see the difference as they both go to play. It both plays video fantastically. Uh, you're really not going to go wrong with either device. It's nice to see um, an operating system like Android really embrace media like the Captivate and Galaxy S has here. Uh, really does a fantastic job handling all different types of video. So from a Super AMOLED versus a Retina display, this one again is a draw because they both look fantastic. Uh, if you like the brightness and you don't mind the color hue, the Captivate's going to be great. If you the color hue bothers you and you want to turn the brightness up a little bit on the iPhone, the iPhone's going to be a great way to go. The consumer now has choice since it's going to be in the hands of which one uh, you prefer as a total package. Let's go ahead and try some direct sunlight and see how this looks. I'll go ahead and let the video play. I'm actually going to first try, before I say direct sunlight, I'm going to try direct light. Let's say you're in a room with lights overhead. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on overhead lights and we'll see sort of how they look. So I now have lights facing directly over the devices. Ordinarily you have a ton of glare. Uh, and in fact you can sort of see the glare a little bit on the iPhone 4. If we go ahead and bring the lights even closer, hopefully I'm not blinding anybody, uh, you can definitely see that there is a bit of glare and reflection on the iPhone 4 that you're not getting on the Captivate, uh, which is sort of interesting. If I sort of wave my hand over, you can see the bit of a reflection there. And you can't see it on the Captivate. You can sort of see it there, see my finger, and you don't necessarily see that on the Captivate. It's something to uh, keep in mind. Now, if I'm not playing video, and just looking at sort of the operating system under the same sort of direct artificial light. Let's see how that looks. So I can go back home. Uh, the glare here is sort of less visible, uh, but again, if I do that sort of finger test, uh, you can see there's my finger there, and you can see it there uh, as well. If I pull the light directly overhead, so it's facing right down, you can sort of see that lamp on it, and that right out of the way. Uh, you do get a bit of glare here and a bit of glare here. Let's go ahead and look at some text and see how text looks under this artificial light. Well, I can tell you, we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Uh, so text on each is definitely visible, uh, and this is one way where the, sort of that hue may sort of come into uh, to help the Captivate. It actually makes the text a bit more visible uh, in direct sunlight. Now, if you're looking at it right here, you can sort of see the reflection of the lamp, and you can see that uh, can not see my finger there really on the iPhone. Uh, you can't really see it there either. Now, if I switch these, since the lamp is off to the left, let's see if there's any sort of difference there as well to keep everything fair. So you can see the reflection now on the iPhone. If I move that out of the way, you can see the fingers there, and uh, you can't see it here as well. So the Super AMOLED does perform a bit better in direct artificial light. Let's go ahead and see how it's going to perform in direct sunlight. All right, so here we are right in direct sunlight. I've got the light coming in from the left-hand side. Uh, we're in the middle of a big heat wave here in Southern California, not a cloud in the sky, so there's no shortage of sunlight. Uh, and let's see how both perform here. Uh, they both look very good still in direct sunlight. You can still see a bit of reflection if I have my hand over it. Uh, but the text on each is definitely visible. Uh, much more visible than I've seen on different devices. Uh, the iPhone 3GS, for example, was not the most visible in direct sunlight. Uh, and other Android devices, for instance, the Nexus One, I had some trouble with. So both these phones look to sort of address that issue. Now what if I switch these around since the sun is coming in from the left side? Both appear to be a bit better, don't really have any view of uh, viewing issues, uh, which is quite nice. So again, if we have to make a conclusion about this, we've looked at text, we've looked at video, we looked at direct overhead light, now direct sunlight. Uh, both displays seem to be very, very comparable. Uh, they both look gorgeous. Uh, these are displays that you have to really see to appreciate. It's not really going to do them justice on the camera. Uh, they both look really, really nice. And the moral is that you're not going to go wrong either way. If display is your only thing to choose from, 
you really uh, have your work cut out for you. This is going to have to be a draw. Both of these just look very good. So when I do my head-to-head -head of the Captivate versus the iPhone, I will do a screen round, and I'll reference back to this video, and that round is going to be a dead even heat, because both of these, again, just look really nice. So hats off to Samsung, hats off to Apple uh, for putting very, very good displays in both of their devices. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check out their website for all of your technology news. Uh, for exclusive content, check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.